Welcome. My name's Eileen Durfee, and I'd like to explain some differences between the different types of saunas that have evolved over the years and how ion therapy uh, originally was in the first type of saunas and how they've kind of transitioned out and they've thrown the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak. Because, um, you know, when you do take a sauna, if you don't have a way to introduce negative ions into your sauna enclosure, actually there becomes accumulation of positive ions. Now in Finland where you know everybody takes a sauna and in Germany and in Europe they do significant studies on saunas and whether they produce enough negative ions. Now when you have a wood-fired sauna, like the traditional saunas, I mean, because they've been around for, what, thousands of years, you know, to get people to sweat, you know, it increases circulation, it has many health benefits. That's one of the things I can make medical claims on. You know, if your medical doctor says you need a sauna, you can write it off your taxes. You know, it, it's undisputed the benefits of heat stress therapy with saunas. So it evolved from the wood-fired saunas that would heat up maybe stones and rocks into a tent to uh, enclosures that have like this big heater that take you know hundreds of dollars a month of electricity to heat up and it has to be built into your home and they will have like rocks on the tops so maybe you see those in a gym a health fitness center where you can pour water over those rocks and then that puts negative ions in the air. It's not to have it be a wet steamy sauna, but it's to produce the negative ions. The drawbacks to those type of saunas created this movement where everybody transitioned from building one of those in that cost thousands and thousands of dollars and spending two to three hundred dollars a month to heat one if you want to take a daily sauna to these portable boxes you know, that you have the walls that put together and they have different kinds of woods that you can line the inside with. And then it came up with these far infrared emitting heaters. Some of them were ceramic and this and that, but you'd commonly see like a bench with maybe a couple heaters at the back, a couple on the front, one below. I had one of those far infrared saunas myself and took daily far infrared saunas. and you know, it increased my circulation, you know, I felt better with it. But later on, I started to begin to learn about electromagnetic frequencies. And I, when I got my Gauss meter, and I went in my sauna, it's like, holy cow, it's pegged out past 100 on every heater. Not only the heaters, but the control panel where you turn it on and you add the time. It's producing all these bad frequencies. And then the control box that was on top that all the wires plugged into for the heaters, it was producing it. So literally, I was being bombarded. I was trying to do something healthy for my body. And I was bombarding myself with harmful EMF frequencies. Now they've come up with far infrared saunas that have shielding that don't produce bad EMF frequencies that will reach you where you're sitting in that cabin, like Dr. Mercola has one, for instance. You know, so if you want to go spend $4,000, you can get one that produces not only far infrared, but near mid and far infrared frequencies. And so there's a variety of saunas. So there was an exodus from the expensive built-in saunas that had the capacity for some negative ions to all these other saunas that don't have any ion generators in them. So we threw the baby out with the bathwater. You know, we got rid of the expense. It's more affordable, you know, for more people to use it. But now we're bombarding ourselves with EMF because most of the far infrared saunas out there do have too much EMF frequencies. And so then there's been the advent of near-infrared sauna therapy. And I believe that there's going to be another exodus. People are going to leave using far-infrared and switch to near-infrared. And there's some differences that I'd like to explain about that. Far-infrared is 4,000 nanometers of light and more. And you have to keep in mind that these light 
wave frequencies are invisible, we can't see them, but they travel at the speed of light. Okay, and then they biologically, re, you know, uh, react with our body, just like sunlight. Sunlight has a full spectrum of all these different light wave frequencies. So at the far infrared, it's 4,000 nanometers and more. And when you, like, Google phototherapy medicine and get on the University of Washington website or whatever all these pre-med students that are learning about phototherapy because medicine uses LED diodes and lasers that have certain frequencies and they use them and they're FDA approved because the cells and the tissues and the organs in our body biologically respond to that light. So getting back to 4,000 nanometers and more has no direct biological response with any of our cells or organs. What it does is it heats up the water molecules in our body. Sure, we're, we, you know, we have more water probably in us than anything, but the benefits of phototherapy are being studied now, and it's found that certain frequencies can restore blindness you know, that was induced with rats with wood alcohol, you know, at 670 nanometers. You've got uh, frequencies that will reduce inflammation, speed healing. Well, you've seen, you know, go get your laser treatment, get rid of your wrinkles, lift your skin, you know, all these things. And so there's drawbacks to using lasers because there's uh, the difference between a laser is it concentrates the light frequencies in this really narrow beam. So when it hits a cell and that cell gets full of the energy that it needs, then it starts to do tissue damage and they, and they, and they call it laser resistance. And so that's why a lot of practitioners that are trained in laser therapy will only do a session for a certain amount of time. It will be intermitting, they'll be moving it over areas of your body. So if you get a good laser therapy to where the cells don't get damaged, it's awesome. You know, now they've got also LED diodes. I mean, even NASA's studying these things with energies and frequencies and how the cells biologically respond to them. So with LED diodes, it doesn't have the negative aspect because the spectrum of the light is more broad. So it doesn't cause a cell to have damage if it's left on it too long. You know, the body sends out that energy a little bit more. So this brings us now, once we have given that groundwork on, on how light interacts with our body, is near-infrared. Why near-infrared? That, I mean, that's just a heat lamp bulb. Some people have them in the ceiling for like a bathroom heater fixture. You go to the buffet. They're heating up the food with those same bulbs. So what's special about those bulbs? They emit near-infrared, 550 to 3,400 nanometers of light. Most of those frequencies are between about 7 and 1,100, and then the graph, I mean, it goes sharply up, curves, and goes down like this. So the neat thing about near-infrared is I could shine near-infrared on my hand, and if my foot is injured, my body will send that energy through my meridian system down to my foot and the cells biologically respond to that light and it doesn't like over concentrate in one tissue so you're not going to get cell damage. And so near infrared is awesome too because if you take a gauss meter and measure on my sauna fix, you know, within just that close to a bulb, it measures about two milligauss. Unlike my old far infrared sauna that was pegged at 100 on every single heater <laughs> and control panel, you know, so let's first do no harm in trying to uh, help our body function optimally. So that's one benefit. Uh, near infrared, you know, it's like, so why wouldn't someone want a Dr. Mercola patented sauna that's got far near and mid that doesn't produce EMF? Well, you know, if, if cost isn't a factor, why would be a reason not to do that? And that is because of the benefit of shunting of blood. 
See, most of these saunas are bombarding you from all angles, heating you up everywhere. Near infrared, there's lights. You sit down or you lay down and hang the sauna from a ceiling. You sit down on a stool or you stand up and you sit about 18 to 24 inches away from these bulbs and your body, in response to that heat, will begin to shunt blood. You know, any excess blood, obviously, you know, we got blood circulating and it's not going to, you know, leave, you know, tissues without a blood supply. But your body's going to engorge the tissues. It's going to vasculate the skin closest to the light. And it's going to cause water to escape from our bloodstream, like on that side of the body. So we're able to wipe down with the towel and rotate. So guess what happens? Your body vigorously is responding to that heat stress and it's shoving all the blood. So your circulation effect, I don't have a medical study to tell you that it's 10 times better or whatever, but with using a sauna with near infrared, people who have stayed in a far infrared sauna that are really underactive adrenal and thyroid, we call them slow oxidizers. You can exercise and practically not sweat. Those people take 45 minutes to sweat in the other sauna, are sweating at 20 minutes with the near infrared. And it's, and it's because the body is biologically responding to that light in a different way because it's not just heating up your water molecules, it's heating up your cells and your tissue with the energy that it can use to transmit around. And so that is phenomenal with the near infrared. And I've developed the sauna fix. It's the only UL approved sauna, near infrared sauna in the United States. Uh, and what that means is, is that fixture, four of them were sent to Underwriters Laboratory and they rigorously tested them and approved the design. And then I pay an uh, annual licensing fee for that. And then uh, Underwriter Laboratory inspectors are in the factory well, they're manufactured and they verify it's to the design with the right components and all of that. So the high quality of the unit uh, was important to me. And, you know, I first started out like in a small room, an enclosure. I even hung the sauna in my shower and closed the door so I could get a little bit more heat, so I could sweat more profusely. Even canvas, because there's a lot of canvas tents out there. But, you know, I, you know, have a tendency to have a lower thermostat. <laughs> so I'm a slow oxidizer, so I'm trying to speed up, you know, my metabolism. So to really get a sweat on, I came up with the idea to create radiant material. Because, you know, remember, light travels at the speed of light. What if I could keep all those healing frequencies in the enclosure I was sitting in to, number one, maximize phototherapy, and then be able to skip the preheat. All the other near infrared saunas on the market today have to be preheated. I even have clients who even have made their own with like a, a canvas enclosure who don't sweat, who have bought my sauna with the radiant tent because you go in there, you're sweating in 10 minutes. And so we've come up with a way to not only make the best sauna therapy available at affordable price, but to be able to make it portable. I mean, I've had friends that have had cancer and family members with health problems. And you know, when people are ill, they generally can't afford, I mean, they can't work. They, they usually can't afford to do the things that they really need to do for themselves. So I mean, I was going and building saunas and putting them in friends' homes and just giving it to them. And I wanted something that was portable so that, and, and I have missionaries, you know, that, that travel a lot that wanted the sauna therapy. And so, you know, I have a lot of dreams and I see little snapshot pictures of stuff. It's like I, I find something that's good and then try to find a better way to integrate it into our life. Because bottom line, if it's not easy and affordable, people aren't going to do it, even if it's good for themselves. So I saw this picture. And so, 
you know, and I went through rigorous testing of all kinds of materials before I came up with one that wouldn't outgas, that didn't have any toxic metals in it. And so that's my, my tent that's in there. That in 10 minutes, you can take the components out of the tent travel bag, out of the sauna travel bag, and you can assemble it, take off your clothes, and sit on that stool inside that tent. It takes 10 minutes. I have clients in New York that live in really small apartments that every single day they take that tent down, you know, after they're done and they set it up the next day. And so it enables people to be able to use this therapy anywhere. I mean, I've got people that have, you know, waterfalls in their backyard and they've got like a, you know, outside porch. They're taking their sauna outside under their little overhang. I've got people with RVs that literally just set their sauna outside and take a sauna. And so it's awesome. And so besides the sauna therapy, I wanted to get the ion component back in here. And when I was flying back from Arizona, I was just kind of in a dreamy state and I saw all these people coughing and hacking on the airplane and I looked down and I saw this little device on my tray table. And so I immediately got a hold of my engineers and said, you know, we got to come up with the most portable, most powerful plasma ion generator that can run on any voltage in the world. And so my big one turned into this little tiny small one that produces 23,500,000 ions per cubic centimeter. It's a blend mostly of negative ions, 19,100,000. Most people are familiar with, you know, ionizers because negative ions will grab a hold of particulates and throw them down to the floor. But those ions are consumed in that process. With plasma, like the Los Angeles airport has giant plasma machines in the concourses, and it actually eliminates the jet fumes. And so this is like comparing from an ion generator to a plasma generator, it's like comparing the 19th century to the 21st century. I mean, pretty soon people won't have ion generators, they'll have plasma generators because a small portion of the positive ions create this electron exchange. So you've got this invisible cloud that when it comes in contact with the protein surface of any bacteria or pathogen, it, it repeatedly rubs hydrogen off of there. So I had this lab tested because there's a sauna study that if you inhale at least 20,000 ions per cubic centimeter, you'll, your sweat volume will double, your rectal temperatures will not go down in response to heat stress and they'll actually continue to rise when you get out of the sauna. And you'd think if you were almost twice as hot and just you'd be uncomfortable, heck no, those people felt great and invigorated. And the scientists said it's because you're inhaling those ions. So this is part of the therapy that I recommend with the sauna, specifically the near-infrared sauna. And as you can see, it's plugged into just an external battery pack that somebody might already have for their laptop or some of their electrical devices. It can plug into your cigarette lighter, your USB, uh, American voltage outlet, or a European 240 volt. You can use this anywhere in the world. I've taken it through TSA. You know, um, I will lay it. I was at my cousin's house, and the basement has mold. Immediately, I could feel it in my respiratory system. I laid this in, on side you know, next to me by my pillow, and I inhaled this all night, I don't have any of the reactions from the mold. And so I tell people it's called the Breathe Safe. If you're breathing, take it with you. The University of Arizona says your desk has 400 times more bacteria than a toilet seat. So lab tests show, gets rid of 46.1% bacteria, 99.68 particulates, 86.4% volatile organic compounds, all the formaldehydes and the benzenes and everything else from this carpet and chairs and paint. And so this little device, it's, it's absolutely amazing. You should go on the website and read the reviews from some of the people who have this and what it's done. I'd love to have some venture capital money to do a 510K registration where I could 
you know, test, I'd like to test, how does this do for asthmatic people and people with bronchial attacks? You know, is it going to reduce the incidence of need for, you know, inhalers or medication? We do know that this particular blend of ions causes your lungs to be able to extract more oxygen. And so this is brand new. Uh, it's uh, got a worldwide patent pending on it. The Breathe Safe trademark's been officially registered. And I'm hoping to take the near infrared sauna bundle with the Breathe Safe to Costco to get their product testers to try it out, see if they like it, because you know, the prices that I have, you know, if you compare them, are very inexpensive. Now, they're, they're just barely over cost. And the reason being is I'd rather pray for somebody and have them instantaneously healed than having to do all this stuff. So I, I'm trying to make it as affordable as I can for people. And so if I was to get with Costco or some other retailer where people could be made aware of the phototherapy benefits and doing no harm and adding in the ions that if we made a lot more of them, we could reduce the prices and more people could afford them. And so my heart is to come up with things that not only protect us from absorbing more toxins, but to encourage our body to eliminate them. We do hair analysis. We're not into chelating and stripping out the junk. We're into fixing the biochemical reasons why your body will use heavy metals as junkyard parts. And so all this comes into play. All the different products really don't replace the others. It's a shotgun pro approach for optimizing our health. And so it's uh, GoHealthyNext.com. I'm from Kennewick. And uh, next, because I've tried everything else. <laughs> I've been sick my whole life. And so finally came across nutritional balancing and hair analysis remineralizing my body and using these therapies that at 53 I feel better than I did, you know, when I was in my 20s. I, I you know, have had many issues and so now I just want to share it with as many people as I can. It's a shame that some of these technologies have been around for a long time and that people don't know about them, so... You can go to my YouTube channel, Eileen Durfee. There's lots of different videos. And I have audio files on my website, gohealthynext.com. You can listen to those. I've been on the Rents Radio as a guest there. So we've got archives. Anyway, thank you very much for coming and listening. Thank you.